And that, without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Stan um, and have him introduce himself. Stan? Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Stan Vanans. I am a Microsoft Premier Field Engineer. Basically, that means I work for premier customers at Microsoft and I do stuff with data. Uh, my main focus before that was on performance tuning and uh, high availability solutions and all those things. Uh, but mainly, I've lately I've been mostly focusing on things like Synapse, Azure SQL Database, and those things. Now, the session of today uh, will be on index tuning for the developer. Now, this is a session which I have created uh, a few years ago, but which has had some updates already. Um, and this session um, is going to walk you through some common coding mistakes I have seen while doing performance tuning of databases. Now, um, what is index tuning? Index tuning is basically looking at the indexes inside the database uh, and seeing if they're optimal or not optimal. And we're trying to remove those less optimal indexes and improve those optimal indexes. Now, um, today will be a walkthrough. So first of all, we will start off with the, the very, very basics of uh, index tuning. Um, so basically, we were going to explain everything about indexes itself. What is a clustered index, non-clustered index? What is a heap table and all the differences between those things? And then we will uh, move, gradually move on to more advanced stuff um, like um, searchable functions and all those things. OK. So, um, Benny, is it okay for me to start? Yeah, Stan, um, you told me that you've got more content for six, more than content for 60 minutes, so you can start and go ahead. It's recorded, so people can catch up. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. So, index tuning for the developer. Um, quick, who am I? But I already kind of introduced myself. So that's uh, that's me uh, at the really cool Microsoft building in Dublin. If you ever have the opportunity to go there, it's a really nice building, and you see a racetrack behind it. It's a really really nice build building. So I'm a Belgian uh, PFE. Uh, I used to be an MVP as well, like Benny, um, and I am a beer and a food lover. And since recently, I've also become a father, like two weeks ago. And uh, today, she has been crying all day, so that's why I'm outside. Uh, so you don't hear cry a crying baby. So if you hear birds, that's uh, because I'm outside with the, with the good weather here. Okay. So what will we learn today? Um, we will talk a little bit about common coding mistakes. So what are things you write in your T-SQL code which are not optimal to actually access those indexes? Um, we will learn a little bit about composite or single indexes. So composite indexes meaning that we combine a few columns and in the include fields, um, some columns of the table for an index. Then we'll talk a little bit about constraints and keys. And we'll also um, briefly grasp analyzing workloads. Basically, what I'm going to show you is uh, how do you see if your indexes are being used? Are they being redundant and all those things? So after this session, um, you should be able to tackle those common coding mistakes. So basically, this will be more focused on um, um, searchable functions. Um, then um, I will also show you how to identify uh, issues with indexes. So after this session, you should be able to start doing that. I'm not going to say you're going to be an expert, but you will start to be uh, becoming an expert or looking at things in your own database and see what, what might be wrong. Um, you will be able to analyze the query plan. Also, of course, the basics. Um, we're not going to go through too deep, but I'm going to show you a few ones which are key for your indexes. I will also show you a little bit to monitor your workloads basically just index workloads. So we'll see um, the index user statistics and also for redundant indexes, okay? Now, index types. There are multiple index types. Um, there are two main, which are called the clustered and the non-clustered index. We've also got something called filtered and column store. Today, we will focus on this one, clustered and non-clustered. We will not be handling filtered or column store indexes. I've got another session on column store indexes, which is a totally different way of um, storing data. Um, it's basically used more in an um, analytics scenario. Um, and it is very handy for if you have a data warehouse and some fact tables and you're doing large calculations on them, you should be looking at column store indexes. There's a lot of data on there. Um, 
on the web. Uh, I would suggest looking at the blogs of Nico Neugebauer, he's a Portuguese MVP who has written a Bible on column store indexes. Um, then filtered indexes is also something we're not be handling today. Basically what you need to know about filtered indexes is that it is just a filter you're going to put on an index. But today we will focus on these two, clustered and non-clustered indexes, and actually another one which is called a heap. But more on that later. Now, a heap table. What is a heap table? A heap table is basically an unstructured heap of data. So an unstructured heap of data means we're going to store our data in a table without any indexes on it. So a heap table is just a table without any indexes on it. So what, what is going to happen if we store data? We don't really care where we're going to store that data. So um, I always make the 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 the, uh, the oh, my English uh, has left me for a second. Um, like I have this room in my house where I put everything which I don't have a really good place for. So basically, that heap table is that unstructured room. Basically, I just throw it in there. I just open up the door, throw it in there, close the door, and uh, it will be there. I know it's there, um, but if I have to go and look for that data, it will take me a lot of time. I know everybody in, in here will probably have this kind of like room or wardrobe where you put all your uh, your crap and your stuff that you don't need or you need sometimes. So that's why what a heap table is in in like in like real life. It's that all, uh, that unstructured um, that unstructured room or, or closet you have. Now, what is a heap table um, built like? Uh, it basically still has something to actually identify your rows. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to get like a row from that heap table. We won't. We wouldn't even know where it was stored. So that is used by a, a row identifier, uh, and a row identifier is actually a multi-key um, 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 sort of uh, row which you see here, and it consists of the file identifier ID, the page number, and the number of row it is on the page. So basically this is how it's going to go through that data. If you're going to ask um, select star from um, that heap table where ID is for, then it's going to go through the file identifier page number and the number of the row on the page to actually find that row. Now the heap table is very fast for data insert, but it's slow for data access because it's generating random IO. Everybody knows if you're going to look in something unstructured, it's going to take you more time to actually find that data. Okay, so in a heap table, you got to remember it's really fast for data insert because we don't really care where we're going to put it. We don't have to actually make sure that we have the same ordering as we would have in a clustered index, but it's very slow for data access. So it means that we are going to have a lot of random IO for this. Okay, now, um, Anything else I want to say about this? Okay, yeah. So for the row identifier we see here, remember that, that it's file identifier, page number, and number of row on the page. Now, uh, a quick brief thing, um, maybe a quick question if it's possible. Does everybody here, um, does anybody here has an, everybody has an idea what a page is? Uh, if you don't know what a page is, just ping in chat now. I do not know what a page is and I will explain what a page is. Just, just a heads up, Stan, there's about 20 seconds delay, so you're going to be stuck waiting. I'll be stuck waiting 20 seconds. I'll just <laughs> explain what a page is then. So basically a page is the smallest element we have inside a SQL Server database. So a page is um, the smallest element, and it's, it's pages which are combined into something which is called an extent, and one of those, one page is about eight kilobytes. Now, every you have data pages, you have index pages, but you also have some sort of management pages. And one of those management pages is the IEM page, which is called index allocation mapping page. And this one is being used for the heap table to actually go and use that row identifier for the page number. Okay. Now, how does this look in the data structure? So basically a request comes in, We've got the IEM page, and that IEM page is going to tell us, okay, uh, you need to get data, and those pages, those are all over here. But if we're looking at a disk at this moment, a disk, then it might be that the data, this row is over here, this row is over here, and this row is over there. Well, this might be a very inefficient data access path. 
while with a clustered index that data will be structured, but more on that later. If you're looking at the query plan, so if you try to identify the issues that might be there with heap tables, if you're going to look at a query plan and people are telling me, okay, um, people come to me, Stan, this query is very slow. Uh, can you show me what is going on with this query? There might be something that's called a query plan, which you can look at, and then you'll see those things popping up. Heap tables can. Now you see here, there's, uh, it's, it's, it's a basically table scan, and this is the name of the table. I've called it heap table. It might, might not be the best name. As you can see, the query was select star from DBO heap table, but this type of thing tells you we don't have an index on that table. This will greatly increase the amount of data that will be fetched for that query. So by putting a good index there, we might solve that issue. Okay. So that was heap tables. Now we'll actually move on to the next type of table, which is called a clustered index table. A clustered index table means that the data in this table will be structured. And it will be structured using a B tree structure, which is called balance tree structure. And basically, it's built like something like this. Just quickly go to my. Okay, that's gone. Seconds. Thought this was started up, but apparently it closed down. There we go. So, what you get now is previously in the heap table we had all these pages which are underneath here. Okay. And this was the IAM page. Now, in a clustered index, what we get is we get intermediate levels, like this. You see the big, you get the picture. Why is this popping up here? There we go. Now, what happens, what the difference is here we actually got these pages, which are the intermediate level. And this intermediate level actually contains data about what we're looking for. Let's say we've put a clustered index on a table on ID. And this page is going to contain, this is ID 1 to 100, which is the root page level. And it will go down to this one and it will tell you, okay, I've got ID 1 to 20 here. And then we're looking for ID uh, um, five, for example, and it is on this page, which actually contains the data as well. This will get a faster data retrieval because it's structured. All the data here will be in a structured way. Okay. So that's a B tree structure. It's ordering data um, structure through a key value. Um, we uh, have multiple ways of doing this clustered index. This is by doing a single field key or a multi-field key. Now, a single field key is when you say, I, I want it to be on ID. A multi-field key might be, I want an ID, comma, date. Then you have it on two uh, fields, which means you make, um, you make the amount of data you're going to put on it, uh, on in that index a little bit bigger which means you need more index pages, which means that the index will get bigger and less efficient because we need to read more pages to get the data we want. It is fast for data uh, reading, but it uh, gives you an overhead for inserting the data because of that ordering. Um, previously, like I told you about the closet or, or that room I have, um, the data um, insert didn't really matter. We could just insert data wherever we want. But now if we're going to insert data, we will insert, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, nicely structured, and we insert six. We have to insert it behind. If you look at a disk, it will be inserted like this, which means, like previously with the, the, the normal magnetic disk, you were going to be able to do a nice read operation like this, which was faster. Okay, so it's faster for data reading, but you have some overhead for inserts. Um, Due to, ensure, due to the ensuring of the ordering of the data, and you, which means if you're going to add additional indexes to the table, not clustered index, because that's not possible, every table can only have one clustered index, it means that we're going to increase the overheads um, on writing data to the table because we have to maintain all those indexes for every operation which we're going to read data, uh, write data. Um, 
So um, ordering the data structure to a key value, you have a single key field or a multi-field key, uh, and it's a B tree structure, which is a balance tree. And I have an image which explains that a little bit better in the next one. So you can see here, you've got the index, which is the root node here. So that was a top node I just drawn there, and which basically contains index rows, which means it just basically contains like uh, on this next intermediate level, we have um, um, ID 1 to 100 and, and so on. And then we are going to be able to go through to the intermediate level. There might be multiple intermediate level, depending on how big your index is and how many data you're going to be ha having in there. And then at the end, you have the leaf node, which contains the actual values and also contains all your data. Very important. It contains all your data. So if you're getting data from your clustered index, you will contain all the data in there, which means if you're going to select um, star from, um, uh, let's say, DBO product where product ID is two, you will get all columns as well because it will be in this page, okay, that eight kilobyte page. A non clustered index will not have that data in there, but more on that later. If we're going to look in a query plan what that looks like, you can see here that you have a clustered index which is going to be accessed. This can be seek or scan. Okay, so seek or scan. Good. The next type of index I want to talk a little bit about is the non-clustered index. Now, non-clustered indexes are additional B tree structures for data access. So additional, which means extra over it when um, writing data to that table. Now, a non-clustered index actually is going to be an index on a different field than your clustered index. Also, a non-clustered index can be added to a table which is just a heap table, so which does not have a clustered index. It's not the best of ideas, but it is possible. Now, additional B tree structures for data access can actually increase speed of of uh, queries which are going to be different than the, the normal query you're having. Let's say you have one query which where you're going to get uh, the data based on the product ID, and the next time you're going to get data on the product category, which is not the clustered index. We're going to have to scan that full cluster, uh, clustered index to get that data. If we would put an extra non-clustered index on product category, we might be able to point seek that data as well because we have an index on that, uh, on that data structure we're looking for. Now, as you can see here, the reference to the row identifier and clustered index key are at the leaf level. Now, previously, at the previous slide, I told you that we have the data here. In a non-clustered index, we do not have the data there. We have a reference to the row identifier. Remember the row identifier of the heap table? So basically, that tells you where the data is in that heap structure. Or the clustered index key, which is at the leaf level, which means that we don't really have the data in there at that specific point in time. Now, if you create a non-clustered index, so just say create non-clustered index on product category, it will only contain product category and the clustered index key or the row identifier if it's a heap table. Now, let's say we're going to select data from a table and we're going to select product category and we're doing, going to do select star, which means we're going to get every column and there might be 20 columns there we might not be able to use that index because it's only containing one of those columns and the, the access by the reference to that clustered index key or row identifier is going to be too heavy. We have to actually access two indexes at that specific point in time. It might be a lot slower. So it might just choose to scan the table. Um, and how to get around that is you might be able to include fields. So include is an option inside the database and then we're going to add data in the leaf level, so the bottom level of that index. Okay. Now, you have to know that every non-clustered index we're going to add, we're going to add overhead to writing data. So every insert we're doing, so if we're doing an insert to a table, so let's say we're inserting a table uh, into product and we have an ID, we have to do one insert into that clustered index. If we have an additional non-clustered index, we have to do the insert in the clustered index and in the non-clustered index. If we do an insert in, uh, we have another um, index on, let's say, date, we have to insert on date, we have to insert on 
product category and we have to insert on the clustered index. So we, you, you get what I mean. It's an additional overhead for writing data and this might increase latency. I have a demo on that later to show you actually what that does. But what people always forget, it also has a lot of additional overheads to memory. Because how does SQL Server work? If you're going to read data, it's always going to um, get that data from disk to memory. If you're going to get data from the index A, we're going to read index A into memory. If we're going to get data from index B, we're going to read index B into memory, which means we might have data four or five times in our memory, which means we have less optimal memory usage, which means it decreases the speed of our queries while we wanted to optimize the speed of our query. So that's very important to remember. It can also have additional overhead for memory because every data structure you create, if it's a clustered index, non-clustered index, will have uh, will be loaded into memory and it will cause um, that there's extra memory needed to actually fetch those queries. Okay, or on that later. Now, a non-clustered B3 index, as you can see it here, um, basically it looks a little bit the same like um, the clustered index. You have the root nodes and then you have the intermediate level which goes to the leaf nodes here and then you might have data you might have data here which are in the includes. But otherwise we just have a reference to the clustered index key or the row identifier and if we're going to get that data we have to go and get the data pages by doing a lookup which is called a bookmark lookup to the heap or to the clustered index. We'll have a little bit more on that later. Okay, so basically it looks the same on those levels, but this will be an extra fetching of data using the clustered index or the heap table. Now, how does this look? As you can see here, it's a bit different than the clustered index scan. We see an index scan here, which basically gives us an idea what it's doing. So it's a non-clustered index scan, um, which means it is going to get the data and scan it from that index. But you can have two things here. You can have scan and seek, where seek will usually get less data and be more optimal, but it always depends a little bit. Okay. Now, I told you a little bit about include columns. Um, and I wanted to focus a little bit more on that because I, I've noticed in previous times when I gave this session, there were more questions about the include columns and how does it work. And basically, I just give you, giving you a little bit of an uh, overview of what is happening here. So a clustered index has all column values in the leaf level of the B tree structure. Okay, remember the leaf level of the B tree structure is that structure that we see over here, and it's the bottom level here. This is the leaf level, leaf nodes. It has all column values, which means we can actually, if we're going to look on the clustered index key, which might, for example, be our ID, if we're going to select star from a table where ID is two, we will be able to get all columns in one go. Now, a non-clustered index key um, on at ID without uh, a clustered index or uh, as a heat table will not have all those column values in there. Um, Basically, this means that uh, it only has that row identifier or clustered index key. So which means we're going to have to get that data from that heap table or that clustered index key to actually get all those column values. So a select star in this case will actually uh, reduce the speed of that, uh, of that data access due to bookmark lookups. Now, what you can do is you can include those fields to add columns in the non-clustered leaf level. So basically in the leaf level, the bottom level of that non-clustered index, you can add data as well. Um, what those things are called, if you're going to put all columns in there, are called covering indexes. Covering indexes are for like really, really bad queries where you have a lot of issues with, and it's better to actually include all those columns. These are in my opinion, more edge cases when you're going to do this. Basically, you're going to try and tackle your code if you see this. But basically, if it's not possible to get around it, um, you might be good with a covering index, but this actually means that you're completely doubling your da table data. So if you're going to have a clustered index on ID and a non-clustered index on date, and you're going to, in that non-clustered index, includes the 20 columns of that table, 
it means that every insert of data will also insert 20 column data inside that second index. So instead of, let's say, doing 20 writes, you're starting to do 40 writes. But let's say you're doing a big insert, instead of 1 million writes, you're doing 2 million writes, which is going to actually hammer your I.O. system and reduce the speed of everything. OK, so that's on include columns. Um, basically, what to what to remember is that a clustered index key has all column values in the leaf level of the B tree structure. A uh, heap table also has all data in its leaf level, but it's not like a leaf level. It's basically just the data structure. The non-clustered index does not have that, but basically has the row identifier and the clustered index key. And include fields uh, is something you can add to a non-clustered index to add columns uh, into the leaf level of the non-clustered index. And covering indexes are basically when you put all columns in the leaf level of your non-clustered columns sorry, uh, in non-clustered index. Okay. Now, talking about indexes, um, if we don't include those fields in there, you get something which is called a bookmark lookup. There are two different types of bookmark lookups. You have an RID lookup and you have a key lookup. An RID lookup means that it's a lookup to a heap table. A key lookup means we're going to fetch the data from the clustered index. Basically, this means we are getting data for, um, we're seeking the data in that non-clustered index. So we know uh, we have a non-clustered index on date and we're looking for the data of today. We are able to get the five rows that we inserted today, but we want all the columns as well, which are associated with it. So we're going to have to go to the heap table or the clustered index table to get those columns. And that's by using an RID lookup or a key lookup. This can really make or break your app performance. It's good for small, but it's really, really, really slow for bad. Uh, really bad for large ones, which means if you have a small, uh, a small table where you're going to do those lookups or a small amount of data you're going to do those lookups against, it will be OK. Um, if you're going to have a large amount of data, it will not be OK. OK, now, what does this look like? You can see here that we have an index seek for a non-clustered index. And then we're going to actually do a key lookup to the clustered index. It can do that because it has the clustered index key inside that non-clustered index. Okay, if we're going to do that for an heap table, you can see we have an index seek here. And then it's going to be pointed out as an RID lookup. Those things, when performance tuning, are really things to check off if we cannot get around them. Are we getting too much data? Are we using select star? Um, are we able to include one column to actually get rid of that RID lookup? Because it will be good for, let's say, 11 rows, but sometimes it might grow to 20,000 rows or 10,000 rows, and then we'll get really inefficient. So it might be good to look at something. Uh, if, if you're looking at a bad query, it might be good to look at those key lookups and RID lookups. Also, those RID lookups might point you out that you might need to create like um, a good uh, a good clustered index on the table to actually speed everything up. Good. Demo time. So I've talked a lot about uh, all these concepts. So like clustered index, heap table, non-clustered index. So I'm just going to quickly show you everything that's. OK, so OK. Connect again here. There we go. I've got this database here called Real Time Analytics. Basically, this is just an Azure SQL database. More on that later in the session of Peter. But um, basically, this is a P1 uh, Azure SQL database, nothing fancy. Uh, all the demos will also be available after this, uh, this session. So, Stan, are we supposed to be seeing Management Studio or something right now? Because yes. I still see the PowerPoint. OK, I will uh, see what went wrong. Let me stop sharing and share again. There we go. You see it now? Yep, I see it. Thanks. OK, good. So um, there we go. Let's see if Zoom it, Zoom it is off again. Yeah, I might boot it really quickly. OK, there we go. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to check if I created a table already. There we go. I'm going to create a table, which is called DBO heap table, which has an ID, int identity, and some value, which is a thousand. Okay, basically a random table I'm creating right now. Of course, I need to switch to the right database. There we go. 
execute this. There we go. And now I'm going to insert 100 values into that heap table. So go 100 just means execute this thing 100 times. Okay, there we go. That's done. And now I'm going to turn on query plan as I plainly put over here. And I'm going to select the data from that heap table. There we go. As you can see here, I am selecting that 100 rows here. So you can see here some ID and some value. If you're going to look at the execution plan, that's what we saw before. So it's a scan, table scan of a heap table. Okay. We're looking at our messages over here. You can see here that we actually had a one scan of that table, which was doing 22 logical reads. Okay. I'm just quickly going to note down that we did 22 logical reads for that heap table. Okay. I'm going to turn off the query plan, and now I'm going to create another table, which is called the clustered index table, which is basically the same structure as the previous heap table. Okay. And I'm going to create a clustered index on that table. So create clustered index. CIX ID is the name I'm giving that index, DBO clustered index table on the ID field. So on this field over here. Okay. Now, it would not be a good idea to put my index, uh, clustered index on this one because it's a quite a wide column, which means I will need more pages to actually um, put the data on there. Okay, so which means my index will get a lot bigger, which will mean I will need more pages, which will slow down the index performance. Okay, so um, I will insert 100 rows to that table as well. I don't know if I executed this. There we go. And now I will turn on the query plan as well and look at the data again. So you can see the data access was quite fast. And if we look at the execution plan, you can see now that we have a clustered index scan. Basically, this means that we're having an index with a clustered index on there. Now, looking at the table here, you can see that we have less reads. So 17 reads just by adding that clustered index in there. So on the scan count, 17 pages have been read. Okay. Oh, uh, 17. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to create another table. So I'll just basically create a table which is called DBO non clustered index table with an ID and identity and some value with a cat. Thousand, same table. And I'm going to create non clustered index. As you can see here, NCIX ID on that table with ID. So that's basically what, what it's going to be on. But now very important to note here is that we have something called include. And the include means that we're going to include the data from that specific table, some value in this, uh, in this index, which means we actually have a covering index, something I told you a little bit before. Basically, I have everything inside that table um, inside that non-clustered index. Um, just want to say about this, that this basically is a copy, sort of a copy of the clustered index. Okay. Now I'm going to turn off my query plan again, insert 100 rows to it. I'm not 100% sure if I did this, okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing again, select the data. As you can see here, execution plan is showing us index scan of a non-clustered index, okay. The amount of rows read, as you can see, it's kind of a copy of that clustered index, so it does the same amount of reads, logical reads 17. So basically, this means that when putting an index on there, we actually have less pages which we're using than in a heap table at this moment. So a heap table um, basically is generating more pages. Um, it's important to note, while sometimes a heap table might have a little less pages because it doesn't have those intermediate levels, so the bigger the index might get, it might get less pages for scanning. So if we're going to scan of the heap table, we might scan less uh, pages because we have the more, all the intermediate levels of the clustered index scan or the non-clustered index scan, which has to be scanned as well. But basically, in this case, for the small table, the clustered index uh, and the non-clustered index are faster and has, has less data than the heap because the heap is going to provision more data already, more pages already. Now, I'm going to create a table which is called bookmark lookup to actually demonstrate that bookmark lookup we were talking about previously. So I'm going to create a table 
um, which is called bookmark lookup. I will have an ID with an identity. So basically an int identity over here, some value, which is a uh, uh, 1000, and I will have some value too, which is a fach, uh, fach 100. Okay, let me just create that table. And I'm going to create a non-clustered index on that table called um, NCI some value on DBO bookmark lookup some value. Okay, basically this index now has an index on this value here, but it does not have an index on this value here and not one on this value here. Okay, and now I'm going to insert um, 10 rows AB, 1000 rows BB, and 1000 rows CB. Okay, I'm going to stop this because I got the execution plan with it. I'm going to execute this again. There we go. As you can see, it's inserting the data. Wait a few seconds for this to finish. Should have put the statistics off as well. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to execute this query here now. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm going to select star from the table where I have the index on A. Okay. Some value A should have less rows than B and C. As you can see here, this one has 1000 rows. This one only has 10 rows. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, select the data from here and include my plan. As you can see, what we have now is an RID lookup. We're actually seeking the data from that bookmark lookup table. So we get the 20 rows that have been in there, have been entered in there. But um, we have to go and get those other columns from the heap table, which is being done using an RID lookup. Okay. Now, looking at this, what you can see here is the amount of reads we're doing here is we have a scan count of one and 29 logical reads in total. Okay, so let's just keep that figure over here. So that's with an RID lookup. RID lookup. There you go. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a clustered index on that DBO bookmark lookup ID. Okay, so I'm going to create a clustered index on the ID. Changes things why? because now oh, I'm going to. has a cost of seven, while that key lookup has a cost of 93, which is a lot. Okay. Now looking at the data being fetched here, we see a lot more data. Now, why is this? It's because we currently have to also take into account that this one has intermediate, intermediate uh, pages which has to be scanned. Well, in the heap table, we only have the IM page and the, the level, the pages below it, which we can go through using the RID lookup. But in the key lookup, we also have those intermediate uh, pages which are in there, which means we have to have those index pages in there as well. And that's why we see more reads here. Basically, it's not a very bad thing. Um, it might be quite fast still, but uh, this is the case where you're going going to do less reads with an RID lookup than with a key lookup. This is not better. It's equally bad. But basically, um, just to show you that this is going to be a little bit less amount of reads. Okay. Now, what we can do as well is instead of um, just doing this specific data here, uh, um, because we're doing select star, we can also add um, the extra column into a new non-clustered uh, non index and include that column. Okay, some value two here. 
As you can see, what I'm not specifying here is the ID field, and that's because I already have a clustered index on that table, which is containing that ID field. Okay. If I'm going to execute the same query again, you can see now that it has changed from an index C with the key, key lookup to an index seek, which is going to be a lot faster. As we can see here in our amount of reads, we are going to logical reads of seven. Okay, so logical reads of seven. Basically, this means that including these fields, we actually decrease the amount of reads from 47 to seven, which means 40 reads less. Don't see this in, uh, in the amount of reads of 40. Let's look at uh, query maybe at your uh, environment where it might be 20 million reads, which suddenly only does 7,000 reads, which is going to really, really, really make a difference from it. Okay. So, that's, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Any questions on this so far? I'll wait a few seconds for questions to come in. So far, Stan, there's no questions in chat. So you can keep going, and I'll start. Um, okay, I will have start another... motivating people. Start motivating people to start asking questions. But you okay, can I go have, through. I have another um, moment in my session where I'll stop for questions. So if you can gather them by then, I can answer questions at that specific time. Yes, perfectly. Thanks. Now, this was basically everything on on indexes. It was a very brief, very fast uh, paced uh, overview of what indexes are. So basically, you have a clustered index which contains all your data in the leaf level pages. You have a non-clustered index which are additional data, and you have a heap table which is basically that that ugly closet or room you have in your house which will um, contain all uh, data very unstructured, which is not very good for your data access. Now, what we want to avoid in our uh, in our environment is heap tables. We always want to have an index where we can actually seek the data, as you saw at the last query, that the seek was really, really going to increase the speed of that specific query. Now, sometimes when you're doing everything right with your indexes, you might still not be using those indexes. And that's because of some common coding mistakes. And um, that's why I'm focusing the next part on common coding mistakes. So why am I not hitting the index? And nine times out of 10, this is because of searchable queries. Now, searchable means search argument able. Searchable, search argument able. Basically, this means that we're going to do something in our T-SQL code, and that is causing us to not being able to use that index. And it's usually because we're using functions in the rare class on the data field. Basically, um, let's say we're going to find data um, of the year 2019. What you can you can write this thing in two ways. You can say where, and then let's say the year function on the date equals 2019. Everybody has done this. I have done this myself. But basically, what this causes is it will scan the data and apply that function to every to all the data before actually just returning you the 2019. A better way to write this, for example, is to do date between. This and then between the first of 2019 and the last day of 2019, and then you will actually get the data using the index because it can use the index which you have made on date. Okay, because then it's search argument able. If you put a function on that specific field, it will not be able to search the data, which means it will um, apply that function to your full uh, table first and then give back the data um, and then apply the filter to that data. Okay. What else can you do is not functions, but calculations in the rare class. For example, you want to make a price calculation in your rare class and you're doing that on the data field. This will cause your data to slow down. Now, how do we solve this? Actually, I have some um, examples here and I will show you what's bad and how you can easily so uh, solve these. There are also a few unsolvables, but I have some, some tips and tricks on those as well. Now, searchable queries, some examples. This is a non-searchable non query. Why? Because we're 
putting the is null function on some field. Okay, so this is not good. This is not going to work. We're going to scan that full table. And we've got this thing here, the left function on some field, where the first letter is A. And here, null. Okay, so this basically can be written in a different way. Also very important, not just functions, but also if we have an incompatibility in data types, for example, non-unicode and unicode. So product ID is defined as a vacher here, and we're doing it as 12. We're not going to be able to search on that function because we're first going to change that product ID to an integer first. Okay. Same thing here, product ID, which is non-unicode, uh, unicode, which is being with the non-unicode here, okay? Basically, those two are incompatible as well, so we have a scan instead of a seek because we first have to make sure that they're the same type of data. Same thing here, this is a calculation we're doing where price times unit price is uh, higher than 100, okay? Basically, this calculation is first going to happen, and then we're going to actually seek if it's uh, if see if it's higher than 100 or not. And then this one is the killer of all performance. Everybody has seen this before and tried to solve this. Where percent a percent? Basically, this is a wildcard search on everything, and it's really hard to solve. But there are some things you can take into consideration there. Now, how can you solve these things? Previously saw the one with the is null field. So some field comma zero equals zero. Where some field is zero or some field is null is a very is the good solution. Okay. Basically this does the same thing as here, um, but it is a searchable function because we're no longer using that function on that some field here. Same thing here. Where left some field comma one equals a is basically the same thing as that a percent. We can use that wildcard search here and we will hit the index we have on that sum field here. Same thing here, product ID defined as vacher. We can just set it as a vacher. Make sure you use the right data types when looking for the data in your rare class. So basically, if you're having a rare class and you're looking for product ID, which is a vacher, make sure you, you combine it with a vacher field in your rare class. Okay. Then here, Product ID defined as Vacher. Uh, make sure you make it the same Vacher here as well. Remove the N and it will go faster. Now, these ones are a little bit more complex. What you can do here for this one, I will have a demo on that later, is you can make an indexed computed column. Basically, it's a trick I found on uh, by Krendra Little. It's a really, really cool, nice, neat trick to actually solve that issue. I'll show you that later. Um, then where the value like a percent percent a, this is a really hard one to sell. Um, basically what I usually do in that case is I put an index on that specific value we're looking for and I make sure I'm not doing a select star, uh, which means I'm going to fetch a smaller index, um, to just fetch that data and then filter the data on there. It's going to do a scan of the index, but it will you do a less scan. I will just get the data and the ID of the clustered index of that table. That might be a solution for that. So avoid the select star, but make sure you just select the ID or something like that with an index on that specific uh, value we're looking for. But basically try to reduce the usage. And if it's not possible, um, uh, it might be a solution to look for full text catalogs and all those things, but I've those are good, uh, but really hard because it requires some code change as well. Um, so basically, if you have those percent percent, uh, try to avoid a select star and try to put an index on that value alone. And in the query, make sure you only get the ID, so you only get the small index. You don't go and do the, the key lookups also and, and all those things. And it might be a little bit faster because it's getting less data. So a demo on searchable functions. Oh, one second it up here. There we go. So I'm going to drop a table over here, which is called DBO Sargeable. And I'm going to create that table again, which is going to contain an ID, some value, some value two. As you can see, this is a Vacher. 
this is an n vector, and we've got a price which is an integer, a unit price which is an integer, and we've got a primary key and all those things here. I execute this. There, we created the table, and now I'm going to insert some data into it. So I'm going to insert 10 times value a, b, 1, and 2. There we go. Execute. And I will insert 1,000 times c, d, 2, and 3. Go. Execute. Wait a few seconds. And now let's see. What I'm going to do after that is I'm going to create a non clustered index EX1 on some value. So on this one over here, the Wacher value. And I will create an index 2 on some value 2, basically on that non Unicode here. And Wacher, some value 2. There we go. Execute. Now, I'm going to turn on the query plan here. And as you can see here, this is a non chargeable one. So I'm going to set statistics time and IO on. Basically, I didn't tell you that before. Basically, this shows you those um, those numbers about the, the logical reads and the time it took for the execution of that data. Okay. So I'm going to select ID from DBO chargeable where is null, so a function on the data field, as you can see here, comma A, where it equals A. Here. Execute this. This is going to scan our table. It's going to be an index scan because it's non chargeable. Looking at the data here, let's do this again quickly. Apologies. There we go. See here, of course, there's not a lot of data in here. And so we've got four logical reads here. Okay. Now, this can be rewritten into select ID from DBO chargeable where some value is A or some value is null. Same query, but different query plan. As you can see, you've got some constant sense, but basically ignore them for now. What we get here is we've got an index seek now, which is a lot better. And if we're going to look at our messages, you can see here now, of course, the same amount of risk because we only have that limited amount of pages on there. Okay. But basically, we move that one from a scan to a seek, and we will be able to reduce our amount of reads on that table. Okay. Same thing here. If we're going to select data from ID, where it left some value A, we will get a scan. As you can see here, we've got the index scan here. And then we're going to do the same thing, where some value equals A percent. Same query. Did I do something wrong? I think I did something wrong somewhere. Executing next scan of the table, and I get 10 rows. <laughs> Where did I make a mistake? Ah, I see what my mistake was. It's like. Very important. It's like, not equals, because equals will not work with that wildcard. So let's execute this again. There we go. And now we get the nice index seek here. Okay. Looking at the messages, two logical reads, while this one does four logical reads. So we actually reduce the amount of reads by 50%. Okay, Look at this at one million reads, not one of the four reads I'm showing you. Just for demo purposes, this is going faster this way. Okay. Now, the bad one here, we've got some value. As you remember here, some value is uh, and we're going to Look at a parameter here, which is n wacher. Okay. Execute this. Execution plan will here tell us index scan. Also, SQL Server will already know that something is wrong and it will warn you. You get this warning here and it will tell you convert implicit to n wacher 20 may affect the seek plan in the query plan sort choice. So it already tells you something is wrong. If we just change this to the right value over here and then look at the execution plan, you can see that we get the index seek again. Okay, so looking at the messages here, you can see that we have two logical reads here. And if we use this one, the bad one, we get four logical reads. So also 50% faster. Basically, um, the, the, the moral of this story is if we use the index seek, we get to be a lot faster. Okay, now, 
The next one is a little bit more complex, but it's been a lifesaver in a few cases uh, when I was uh, tuning some queries. What you see here is you see a select ID from Sargeville where unit price plus unit plus price equals is uh, lower than four. If you execute this, this will definitely give you a clustered index scan. So it will scan all the data because basically it's all the data in there. Okay, so how do you fix this? Okay, this is not the easy fix because we cannot put an index on unit price plus price, or can we? You actually can by actually making a persistent uh, computed column. And how do you do that? You just say alter table, set C price as unit price plus price. So I'm just going to alter the table like this. There we go. And then I'm going to create a non-clustered index on that computed column, as you can see here. Now it is a persistent computed column. And if we're going now going to select the data from this one, you can see that we get an index seek on that non-clustered index I created. There we go. So basically we were able to solve this issue with the price calculation, but this might be something else, something else you're computing in that data. Um, by adding a computed column, which basically is not really going to change something to your application, you might be able to speed up those queries as well. Um, and as you can see, we didn't change the code. We just changed the indexes and a little bit of the, date, the table structure. Basically, the query stays the same, but it's faster. Okay. Any questions so far, Benny? Yeah. There's there's one question so far, but I have one myself um, about the last bit you pre presented. Um, where would you draw the line for adding in computed column versus performance? Because I'm assuming that those computed columns also have some sort of overhead cost. Yeah. It's the same thing. Eh? Um, basically, every insert, uh, you will need to make sure that that persistent column gets inserted as well. And if you have an index on it, you will uh, basically it's an extra insert you're doing. So. Uh, the answer is it depends. It depends. Basically, well, yeah, you wanted me to say that, but I didn't say it. You said it. Uh, no, basically, basically, it means that um, if you have an issue, basically, what we're looking at is we have issues. There's a problem with this query. You know that this is the issue. How can you get around it? This is the solution. Of course, this always needs to be tested and all those things. But basically, this might really save you instead of 10 million reads doing 5,000 reads, which basically brings down the uh, storage cost you're using uh, yeah. because you need those very flashy uh, Fusion I.O. cards, uh, but you basically just release every pressure you have on your app by doing this. Okay, yep. thanks. Um, then one more question from Kenneth Moons. Uh, he's saying that um, he's read somewhere that the execution plan in management studios sometimes isn't fully, re fully reliable, especially with the percentage, percentages that are being shown. Indeed, the percentages are not really, really completely reliable, uh, but basically it gives you a good indication. Um, it's always, as you, as Benny specified uh, previously, it depends a little bit, but it gives you an idea. Of course, you need the first, the first ID. Basically, I just look at the query, look at the percentages and then the things that are in there, and that gives me already an idea about uh, the amount of data being fetched and what are the most heavy components. Uh, but then I will go deeper into the code and look at the statistics and, and what is being created there and, and see if I can solve anything, uh, any, anything related to it. But basically, it gives you an indication. It doesn't give you the hard, cold hard truth. It gives you an indication uh, because it's usually, if you take estimated plan, for example, it can be completely different. And especially like going to SQL Server 2019 or the latest versions of SQL Azure SQL database, you also have the query plans that might might change over time and all those things. So, um, it, it, it of course it it's of course there it might not always be correct, but it's a good first indication. That's what I'm uh, what I want to show you. Okay, all right. Uh, if there's one any more, yeah. one more question, uh, it's going back to the computed columns to prevent yeah. nasty computations. Uh, Ratza Eskins is asking, will this work with non-clustered or clustered column stores as well? Um, it's not yet for clustered column stores, I think. I have to check that, um, but I remember trying it and I didn't think it was possible yet. Um, let him ping me on Twitter and I'll look for him. Uh, I will look it out. Look it right. up. I'll test. Thanks. 
that's uh, that's all the questions. Thanks, Stan. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, how much time do I left left, Benny? Uh, ten minutes, but you can go a few minutes over. It's not that bad. Okay. Um, I have ten minutes left, which means I can uh, do two more topics. Um, um, so I have index ordering and composite uh, keys. I have constraints and keys. I have too many indexes. I have redundant or duplicate indexes. And I have index user statistics. Can you quickly make uh, a small vote on which topic they want? So index user statistics or redundant or duplicate indexes or too many indexes, constraints and keys or index ordering and composite keys. So right. Let's say the first two people who react can choose it. I'm, I'm modeling chat to see things coming in, but we'll have to wait for about 10 seconds. I know, I know. But ah, that's, normally how I, that's normally <laughs> how I do uh, these sessions. I, I just let people choose what they yeah. want. Okay. Nobody wants so index ordering versus complete keys, constraints and keys, too many indexes, redundant or duplicate indexes. Index okay, redundant and duplicates, please. Okay, redundant and duplicates. We'll start with that. And then after index ordering. Index ordering. Okay, I'm going to start off with index ordering because that's easier for my brain because it's in the first part of my uh, of my of my uh, my PowerPoint. Okay, so. Um, I will talk about index ordering and composite keys first. So index ordering um, basically is very important if you're going to use multi-column uh, indexes. So let's say you are not going to create a clustered index or a non-clustered index on, let's say, ID, but you're going to use ID and date or ID1, ID2, and ID3. Um, it might be a combination of several uh, columns inside an index. Um, so what I'm going to show you now in a quick demo is what is the difference between multiple small indexes versus one large index, and which one might be the better, best one, and in which case will one be better than the other? And when can you keep using the one, and when will you not be able to use the other one? Um, now, having multiple indexes on the same field um, can cause redundant or duplicate indexes. And now what I see a lot of customers is uh, if you find like the database tuning advisor or something like that, or uh, missing index details, um, people just plainly start putting those indexes on there. And that usually gives you a lot of redundant and duplicate indexes because that engine that's behind it is not all knowing. Um, it might give you a good indication on what might be a good index, but it might also just propose you something that's already in place, but in a different order. For example, it might um, tell you, okay, you, you've asked for a, in the where class for ID1 and ID2 and ID3, so I'm going to propose an index on ID1, ID2, uh, and the next time you're going to execute the query, I'm going to propose an index on ID1, ID2, and ID3, which basically means those two indexes could be combined in one index on ID1, ID2, and ID3. So this is going to create a lot of redundant and duplicate indexes. But also the way you write that query. So if you create create non-clustered index, for example, ID1, ID2, ID3, the ordering you're doing that already defines on what can be used, on, on what that index uh, can be used and on well, which where or seeks, which, which where clauses it cannot be used. I'll show you that in a quick demo now. So uh, let me go here to the next demo. Uh, composite index ordering there we go just a few seconds okay i'm going to drop this table here and i'm going to create a table here which is called id1 id2 id3 okay so create ordering and single and i will insert 200 rows um one two and three on those three ids there we go and i will insert 2500 rows of four Okay, basically, I'm just going to select from six columns. It's an easy way to quickly insert data. There we go. Um, I need to do this again because I only inserted 1,000. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an index on ID, including ID2 and ID3. I'm going to create an index on ID2 and include ID2, ID, and ID3. An index on ID3, on ID2, and ID, ID is going to be included. Okay, it's a little bit complex, but basically these are all redundant indexes, as you can see here. Oh. There we go. 
Okay, it's already been created, I think. Uh, one second, I'm going to do this again. Then I'm sure. Okay, everything works now. So I'm going to turn on the query plan as well. And I'm going to select the data here. So I'm going to select ID 1, ID 2, ID 3, where ID is 1, ID is 2, and ID is 3. Okay. Execution plan, as you can see, we have index seek. Okay. And that index seek is going to be using which index? It's going to be using index 1 here. Okay. And this gives us about 74 logical reads. Okay. Now I'm going to drop those indexes. So basically, I'm going to drop all those indexes because we're using a lot of red clauses here. Um, what we can do for this specific query, it's not going to be for every query. If you have uh, other queries, I'll show you a bit later, you might need other indexes. But basically, I can drop all those indexes and replace that by one composite index Okay, on ID1, ID2, and ID3. And I'm going to do exactly the same query again. And as you can see here, execution plan gives us an index seek. And that index seek is going to be on that object, the composite index, compix. Okay. But looking at the amount of reads, you can see that the amount of reads went from 47 to 8, which means that we kind of like really, really increased the speed of that specific query because that index one only has the data from that first index from that first ID. By combining those three, we can actually have a more effective way of seeking that data. Okay, So it increases and decreases the amount of reads, decreases the amount of CPU, which means we're going to be faster. Okay. <clears throat> now, what we can do is that specific index we created here on those three fields, we can use for other queries as well. We can use it for this query, for example. This will still seek everything. So we can use an index seek here. You can see here the amount of reads, 45, 54, which is still a little bit more because the index is wider, but it's still a seek. We're still getting data in an efficient manner. We can still keep using that index for ID1 and ID3. But note that if we're looking at this or here, we have 54 logical reads. But what we have well, what happens here is we first get a seek and then we get a scan. So what we see here in our predicate is that our predicate is on um, our seek predicate. I'll just zoom out a little bit again. Let's see if we can get it in here. It's on ID. And then we have a predicate, basically a sort of a filter afterwards on that ID tree. So basically we first seek the data which has ID one, and then we scan all the extra data which is with it as well. And then we actually do a predicate on that ID tree, we don't seek on it. Well, on this one, I'll just show you again real quickly, we can have, we have two seek predicates. So we have seek, while here we have seek and then sort of scan, okay? Using ID2 and ID3, we are not able to use that index. As you can see here, we're not able to use that index. It's because ID1 and ID2 ID2 and ID3 are not, um, we always need ID in there because of the ordering. We first put ID here and then ID2, then ID3. So ID1 and ID2 goes, ID1, ID2 and ID3 goes, ID and ID3 goes, but ID2 and ID3 don't go together for a seek on that index. Okay, so that's composite indexes versus single indexes. Basically, of course, if we're going to have an, uh, a query which is going to select from ID2, we need an index on ID2. And if we're going to select from ID3, we might need an index on ID3. But basically, if you see more of the same queries, for example, you have a query where you're always going to get the ID and the date, it might be good to combine those ones because you will be faster that way. Okay. So that was that. Let's move on to the next part, which was, um, it was redundant, eh, Benny? My brain is, uh, I've got a baby brain at the moment. Yep, it's redundant. Okay. So basically this kind of like joins a little bit with the, the previous one. So um, it's indexes which have the same key columns. Basically you can have an index on ID1 uh, and you can have an index on ID1 and ID2 and you can have an index on ID1 and 2 and 3 and you can have an index on ID1 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this is going to create a lot of redundant or duplicate indexes, because what you can also have is you can have an index on ID1 and ID2 uh, with an include column of product. And then you can have an index on ID1 and ID2 with an include column of uh, product category, for example. Basically, these are completely equal indexes, um, which can be combined into one index which means if you have multiple indexes, we will have multiple data, multiple things to actually uh, manage and maintain, which will increase memory usage, increase storage usage, increase CPU usage, which will slow down your system. So a redundant or duplicate indexes are not the best thing to do. So basically what you can do is if you have multiple indexes with different types of include fields, add those include fields into one index, and then you will actually get a good uh, a good index, one index which can be used by all those queries. And indexes with the same key columns, basically at the ID and the ID1 and ID, uh, ID and ID2, for example, add them into one index. So basically you have an index on ID and you have that composite index so you might need for that other web class as well. Of course, always this has to be tested and checked and then you have to check the usage of that index and see if you didn't break anything else but if you're looking at redundant index so basically an index which is exactly the same so you've got an index on id and an index on id and id2 you are quite safe to, to, to look at um, making a com composite index out of that one also, the ones who have extra include fields, of course, if you add extra include fields, you might increase the overhead by inserting data. So it all has some gains, but also some, some things which, which might pose against the performance. But usually going with your gut feeling and testing this, um, it will show you that it will be a lot faster if you can actually remove those redundant or duplicate indexes. And I've put this thing here, data be student advisor, don't really listen to them, um, look, um, look at them, um, get your recommendations from it, but don't plainly put them in there because they will create a lot of redundant or duplicate indexes. Okay. Also, especially, I didn't put it here, the missing indexes. Look at them, but don't plainly insert them or create them. Okay. Let me quickly show you how you can fetch those ones. So I have one demo here, redundant and duplicate indexes. So what I will do here is first, uh, I will switch my connection to my local system here. There we go. And I will create a table which is called uh, DBO person. And I will create a clustered index on business entity ID. I will create a non-clustered index on person type. Uh, non-clustered index on person type and name style, uh, non-clustered index on person type, name style, and include the business entity ID. Okay. Now, if I'm going to open up the next query, which is going to fetch me the redundant and duplicate indexes. So basically, I, I never invent uh, the wheel again. Uh, so I got this query from uh, SQL Server Central, finding and eliminating duplicate and or, or overlapping indexes. And I'm just going to plainly use this because it's a good query to show you what's going on. See here, it's already a report. This query will just report me which are redundant or duplicate indexes. As you can see here, all these indexes we see here, those three non clustered indexes, could be combined into this one here. And we could remove this one and this one. Okay, so basically, that's what those, uh, those redundant indexes are, and this is how you find them and, and look at them. Basically, don't start plainly importing, uh, plainly deleting all of them because you might need like that specific index for that quarterly uh, system you're going to, uh, let's say uh, the end of the quarter, which is going to do a lot of calculations and suddenly the whole load breaks. Uh, but basically look at them and, and test it with your application. Make sure you have a testing plan and all those things. Okay. Um, so that concludes everything for now. So just a quick summary. Um, so there are multiple index types. Remember, non-clustered clustered index. Um, clustered index is the has the data in the leaf level. Non-clustered index are additional indexes. Bookmark lookups are evil. So basically, if you have a key lookup or a bookmark lookup or RID, or the RID lookup, uh, try to get to get around them um, to make sure that you're getting the seek um, and not doing those those lookups to the tables, which will slow down your query. 
searchable queries are important. So search argument able queries. Basically, make sure that you write your code in the correct way. Don't put functions in your where class. Use the computed column to get around the other stuff. Um, index ordering matters, as I've shown you before, um, that if you have ID1, ID2, and ID3, make sure that ID1 is always inside that specific uh, where class. Otherwise, you won't be able to use the index. Uh, constraints and keys, just quick thing. If you put constraints and keys in there, it might reduce the amount of joins needing to happen because it already has the data in there. It's very interesting when you're using views. Okay, do not over index and check your index user statistics. Um, if you want some more information on those things, I will add my uh, demos into a zip file and I will, Benny will kind of like get it somewhere to you guys. Uh, and if you have some questions on that, just ping me on Twitter and I will try to respond to it. Okay, uh, any more questions? Uh, I haven't seen any in chat so far, but let's just say that they can put them in chat and that you'll log on to YouTube yourself as well and answer them in chat so that we can have a small break now um, okay. to allow people to grab a drink, uh, go pee, whatever, before Peter starts to present. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Stan. It